Hi everyone! I made it to prime time. Surprise, it's Alex. Hi everyone! Oh. I made it to prime time. Hi. Surprise, it's Alex. I had I myself live here. Surprise. Here, so I can make sure the sound was good. So I don't know if Linda told you that I was um, going to be here t this week. So I think last time on Facebook she said she'll see you next week but surprise we had this planned i made a cat fabric shirt that you guys saw in the opening slides i'm wearing it i'm going to tell you all about it i'm very excited to uh spend this time with you guys and i don't have a cat with me at my house in cleveland that i'm here at i know betsy does usually whenever we do calls with betsy she has her cats like climbing around her desk or sitting in her window or eating something in the window we're going to talk about cats today and just like what i normally do if you don't like what i talk about remember when we talked about striped pants remember when we talked about pink and barbie well you didn't have to like any of those things to just feel inspired and feel like Oh my gosh, I can't wait to just learn something new. So I like to call my live streams a fashion and fabric feature. So I like to just talk about fabrics and I like to talk about fashion. Some of my favorite things are just seeing what kinds of fashion trends are happening in the world right now. And animal prints are one of them, guys. So we have all day this morning this afternoon wherever you are we're just going to be talking about animal prints and uh specifically cats so i'm just going to say hi on some of the comments here and i'm going to also open with some nice cat jokes so go ahead wherever you're watching you can watch both on facebook and youtube now live leave a comment tell us where you are watching if you're watching on youtube or if you're watching on facebook and also leave a comment and tell us your your first cat's name or if you've never had a cat want a cat that yet that isn't yet a dream you've had in your life that's been realized maybe just tell us what you would name your cat if you had a cat hi jean stanley Aw, good to see everyone. Yes, I see some Facebook watchers. I see some YouTube watchers. Hello, Ruth from Colorado. Hello, Pat from Houston. Oh, I wonder if that's Betsy or Linda. We've got Betsy and Linda on the comments today. So someone at the sewing workshop says they would name their cat Fluffy, which is arguably either highly original or not original at all. But either way, I love it. All right, my first cat joke is this. What is a cat's favorite TV show? Anyone? Claw in order. It's hard to like tell jokes here because I'm by myself, so I can't hear the laugh of an audience or anything. So I'll just, I'll just laugh internally. What is a cat's favorite cereal? Mice Krispies. Good one. What does a cat say after making a joke? Think about it. What does a cat say after making a joke? Just kitten. When cats need to go to the airport, who do they call? They need to get a ride. Do they call an Uber? A tabby. They need to call a tabby. I think that was the first cat I remember. Uh, when I grew up, we had a tabby cat name. Oh no, I just forgot the name. Probably Linda could leave a comment. Oh, Tabes. Tabes. I have T A B Z. I'm not sure, but my mom. My mom grew up with cats. I think my dad mostly had dogs. And then they met and then they started having both. So we ha I had both cats and dogs growing up, but Tabes was my first cat. And then we had a great cat named Zipper. Um, RIP Zipper, we will love you forever. <laughs> and then we had a cat named Tink. So, and then dogs, we've had mostly yellow labs, but most recently my dad uh, has a, what is it? Like a Bichon Poodle. It's tiny and my dad is a big guy. Um, so for him to have a tiny little dog that follows him around and goes in the car with him is 
nearly the cutest thing ever. So uh, we are both a cat and dog loving family. I live in a house in Cleveland and I don't yet have an animal, but I, th I think of it often. I think of it all the time. I just dog sat for a golden retriever this weekend, um, who is my neighbor's dog. And I at least I'm like, at least I get to do that and share experiences with these dogs and then give them away to their owners. So all right, one more cat joke. <sighs> How did the mom cat know she was pregnant? Think, think a little bit. Her test was positive. <laughs> All right, everyone can hear me? Okay, I saw a comment about no sound, so just wanted to make sure. Okay, well, let's go to our presentation. I have my shirt on and I'm excited to talk to you about the nine lives tunic using this cat fabric that I made for you guys, especially today. All right, you guys see me down here in the corner. Hello, hello. All right. Let me go over to, oops, where I switch through. Okay, perfect. Literally perfect, perfect fabric, guys. That's what we're talking about today in the fashion and fabric feature. Live with Alex from Cleveland, Ohio. First, a few things before we get into it. Go over to our YouTube channel and click subscribe. Like I said, we are now doing Facebook and YouTube lives. So in order to get notified whenever we go live, just click on subscribe. Then you'll be notified that we have a live stream. I talked to some of my tech friends last week and they were telling me how YouTube has a little bit better bandwidth. It has a little bit better interface for live streams. And it's just all around generally better than Facebook Live. YouTube was started with the idea of obviously streaming videos and streaming live. So it just has a little bit better capacity for live streams. So give that a try. Even today, if you're on Facebook, hop on over to YouTube. You can just Google YouTube type in sewing workshop with linda lee or sewing workshop on youtube and this is what our page looks like and you'll see in the corner of that screen there is a button that says subscribe so click that and follow us on youtube all of our videos really that we've ever done are posted here to youtube as well as our website but this is just kind of a good go-to place for you guys to see everything Another fun update, guess what everyone? Who wants to join me in Cleveland? Linda and I are doing a knit ensemble workshop where you get to make your own two piece knit wardrobe. You get to make the ET and the Helix pants, two knit garments, a knit shirt, and knit pants where you're gonna learn how to do that in Cleveland, Ohio at a local facility, a beautiful open air lobby, um, that has great natural light, just great large spaces, tables. Um, so you can see all the details for that on our website. We just launched that today. They're very, it'll be very similar to our So Kansas event, if you're familiar with So Kansas. So if, if any of you have wanted to join a So Kansas, consider this similar to like a So Cleveland event, just with a different city. So we're in Cleveland and we format the day where we have three full days of sewing and a cocktail night aperitif night at my house actually so if any of you have always wanted to see my colorful house please come i would love to have you for the first 20 people that sign up uh, i will make you a special drink <laughs> and i'd love to have you so um you can see all, like i said you can see all the details um we just ask that you pay a down payment or no i'm sorry we're not buying houses here uh you can pay a deposit for 150 today that secures your spot and read all about it. And Linda and I would love to see you. It'll be a lot of fun. All right, let's get into it. So I am now Alex the Cat Lady because of this shirt. I've already gotten so many compliments on it. I am wearing a tunic length nine lives shirt. 
This pattern I lengthened six whole inches. You could perhaps argue that this Nine Lives pattern normally is ar around the length of a crop top. Um, not quite that short, but uh, it does have a diagonal hem. So, you know, one side is sh would be shorter than the other. It's very normal for Linda to lengthen this two inches just regularly. So I lengthened it six inches to make it a little bit more of a tunic length. And then I had to pair it with Helix pants. We don't have this fabric, but um, I wore these all over London this spring. And these are just some great go-to skinny pants. These, this cheetah print, this animal print, this leopard print, um, really, I, I would argue, is this neutral? Can an animal print be neutral? That's my argument today. <laughs> okay, so here's the cat that I want your guys' opinion on. Should I get a cat? Yes or no? Leave a comment in the chat on YouTube or Facebook. I recently, with a friend, went to the Cleveland APL, oh, and I have never experienced so many emotions as I have when I walked through that place. Obviously, it's just rooms and rooms of cats, rooms and rooms of dogs. There was a bird room. There was a reptile room. I came across this cat. This cat's name was Cutie Pie. And <laughs> she was just sitting there and she was so sweet. I believe she was about two years old. And I, I've, I've realized I can't really have a dog because I don't have outside space. So I have to kind of take the dog out every time. If I were to get an animal, I could get a cat. So leave a comment. <laughs> Jean, you're telling me yes, I see that. Rhonda, you love kitty cats. Rhonda gets me in trouble because we have an Instagram relationship and she sends me dog videos. So I always want dogs, but now I want cats. I mean, in an ideal world, I probably have multiple animals running around, but you know, today is not the day. But potentially a cat I could have you know, because it's a little bit easier maintenance. I do travel a lot, so that's the only thing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tally up the votes here. Should I get a cat? Should I get specifically this cat named Cutie Pie? We love cats at the sewing workshop. Like I said, my mom, yeah, I think has had a cat. I don't know how many cats she has had in her lifetime, but I've had three. Um, and I, you know, she would tell me stories about certain cats she had when she was growing up or as a single person. Um, this is Tink. So Tink was the most recent cat we had and we found her, my mom and I went to Topeka's shelter and got her when she was really, really small and we didn't think she would be a long haired cat. <laughs> so suddenly Tink is now long haired and fully grown and very fat. And so we were very surprised by that, but she was really sweet. She would always play with you know, little things we were doing at the table. There's me drawing. We ha Linda was in a pumpkin making phase. I think she did a pumpkin making class. Tink loved the pumpkins. So that is Linda's, um, you know, one of Linda's beloved cats, Tink. And uh, here are Betsy's cats. Cats love fabric, especially Betsy's cat. So we have Simone sitting on the fabric on the left. We have both the cats, Dottie and Simone together, and then Dottie is on the right. Oh my gosh, adorable. I mean, it looks like Betsy. I think you should just get your own Instagram page for your cats because they look like they have so much personality. These, the both of them together just look like they could be little cat influencers. So, um, but who knows that cats totally love generally anything with fabric, anything with sewing. Betsy shared the story about how her cats do nap on fabric, but they don't get to be around any thread or anything sharp because she's not the only sewer that she knows that has had to have emergency surgery for a cat related sewing incident. I'm sure you guys who are watching this could relate to that if you have cats. I, I, I believe I was there or I, I know the story it was either Tink or Zipper that was playing with the um, presser foot and needle while the sewing machine was sewing. And I think had the needle go through its paw. So everyone be careful out there. We need to like have a caution zone for our cats around the sewing, sewing tables, but we know that cats love fabric. We also know that fabric loves cats. How many animal print things are we seeing out there? I went down a little rabbit trail about learning kind of the history of animal prints on clothing. I even Googled what was the first 
animal print that was printed on fabric. And while I couldn't find anything that specific, I obviously kind of learned different things like when you had an animal print on your clothes, from the beginning of when this started happening, kings and queens, it was obviously a sign of power. It represented social status and wearing it would give you, supposedly, the power of that animal. So if you wore a leopard print, you would hopefully be as quick as a leopard or a cheetah and so on and so forth. So I think that's even something to consider today. Like how, how do we feel when we wear these fabrics? How am I feeling right now when I wear this cat fabric? I feel probably lots of different things. I feel, you know, easygoing. I feel like I also want to play. I feel very festive and fun, but I also just feel relaxed. So it's an interesting thing to think about how you feel when you wear fabrics and what it represents to you when you wear that print. There are lots of cats in the world. I didn't really know this, guys, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big pop culture fan. I love Taylor Swift. I can't say I, I know all of her music. I'm not like a huge, huge, as they call it, Swifty, but I appreciate, I mean, she's a mega, mega star and her, her tours right now are selling out. She's setting all these records and she loves cats. So we're gonna play this video <laughs> of her actually reciting on Jimmy Fallon how many cats she can name in 30 seconds. So let's go. On your mark, get set, go. Scottish Fold, Ragdoll, Ragamuffin, um, Maine Coon, British Short Hair, Exotic Short Hair, American Short Hair, Devon Rex, Cornish Rex, Sphinx Cat, Abyssinian, Persian, Siberian, Burmese, uh, Norwegian Forest Cat, uh, Aussie Cat, Bengal, um, um, Bombay Cat, Russian Blue, is there a British Blue? Um, um, Munchkin Cat, um, um, a Black Cat, a Calico Cat, a cat that knocks pens off of desks. No! Uh, yep. So Betsy, can you name all those cats? Because I wouldn't be surprised if you could. Literally, I had no idea. <laughs> Taylor Swift knows. These are her cats. Um, she, they're, oh gosh, they're gray something or others. They have, the, obviously, the ones with the smushed faces. They're so cute. Um, their names are Olivia and Meredith, and they're named after famous TV personalities. Uh, one from Grey's Anatomy and one from Law and Order. So, she, she takes them on tour with her. She carries them around. She's like my dad with his dog, Peach. She has these cats wherever she goes. All right, here's my fabric feature today, everyone. In case we weren't ready for it, uh, it is all about animal prints. And as you guys might know from my previous presentations, one of my favorite things to do is actually search for images on Pinterest using the search term street style. Animal prints were really big this spring and even into the summer when I was in London, like I said, I wore these pants all over the place, but I was seeing, we were seeing a lot of things like you're seeing here, dresses, purses, skirts, combinations of colorways with the prints. It, it kind of seemed like almost the louder you could get with your animal print, the better it was. So this, fashion feature really, again, just brings to light the concept, don't be afraid of prints. I looked up an article, six Vogue approved ways to wear leopard print in 2023. These are Vogue approved ladies. So this is A-OK -okay in the book of fashion right now in the year of 2023. Um, but here we have like a Saint Laurent shirt uh, that's Similar to the Nine Lives and the Cottage shirt, so we've kind of got these shirts with collars. We've got the idea of mixing prints. Call me crazy again, like I said earlier, but are these pants considered neutral? Here these pants are with a nice, kind of reminds me of a Now shirt, um, or even a, a sterling jacket, or a, a pocketed shirt like the Balboa, uh, that lint, that one third in with the pants. I mean, these pants could go with so many things. And then of course, the one on the end, you all know I love a matching set, but considering making a collared shirt with matching shorts, something to consider for, of course, as simple as pajamas, but also something you could just wear out. Maybe even if it's just to get ice cream or go to the grocery store, but go big or go home, everyone. Go big or go home. 
Uh, I, like I said, kind of went down the rabbit hole of looking up the history of animal prints. So in the 1930s, this movie, Tarzan the Ape Man, um, the characters were wearing animal print clothing, and this caught the eye of the audience. It was enormously popular. So that kind of brought it into America. This movie ended up having five sequels. So the actors were huge, um, and people were seeing this a lot more common in these movies. And then Betty Page, dressed up in a leopard print mini dress that created this uproar for animal prints. I would just say... Find, Google Betty Page on your own. I didn't want to post any pictures of her here in this slideshow. But uh, the mini dresses, she had mini dresses, she had shorts, she had short dresses, long dresses. Betty Page was just an icon when it came to the leopard, leopard prints. And then in the 1940s, it was Christian D Dior that had a whole line of animal prints, specifically leopard. And he really created a whole new era for the animal print. And then as we go on, we have the hippie movement of the 1960s, the 1970s punk rock, and then the 1980s just had this overwhelming amount of animal print. It was almost too much. 1990s, 2000s, it's kind of a little bit less entering back in. We have Jackie Kennedy, oh, I forgot to say Jackie Kennedy, and then Jennifer Lopez um, kind of had iconic moments. The Met Gala is a big themed event for the fashion industry and just pop culture in general. So you know, it's been in different eras and different themes within that event that the animal print dress has really shown up. This picture on the right is from that Dior 1947 fashion show. I want that hat too. Animals go in houses too. So um, like I said, the first 20 people that sign up for the Knit Ensemble Workshop in Cleveland get to come see my house. So this is in my house. I got this uh, in London, actually. This is a House of Hackney lampstand with a House of Hackney lampshade. And um, I have this at my little bar cart in my house. And um, it's where I could be serving you drinks if you come over for the cocktail party in November. So... Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of just mixing prints in general, especially zebras. Zebras are also a great animal print. I have a zebra bathroom, so uh, come, come see. <laughs> I would love to have you over. So uh, these are just some pictures from my house, and um, you can follow me on Instagram or ask me any questions about my house. This is a famous wallpaper from Scalamandre. Um, this wallpaper showed up in Wes Anderson movies in the 1930s and it be, just became very iconic. This zebra, I think it's called a roaming zebra print, comes in lots of different colors, lots of different price points. You can even get this at Home, De Home Depot, but the original is Scalamandre and this is the, obviously the orange colorway. So people ask where the bathroom is in my house and I'm like, oh, it's the orange zebra room. It's obviously very not, not very hard to find. Here it is, everyone. Here is the best animal print shirt. This is using our nine live shirt pattern. And it, I have, I'm wearing what we, what we have created as a kit, the perfect nine lives tunic kit. It's on sale today. It's normally $76, but you can get it today for $60.80. I'm going to tell you about it. What I'm wearing is the Nine Life shirts, true to the pattern. All I've done to it is I've just lengthened it six inches. Therefore, I've added extra buttons. So it has eight buttons total in the shirt. I think it's five normally in the pattern. So all I've done is lengthened it to make it a tunic length. You can, of course, lengthen it any length you want. It doesn't have to be a full six inches. It could be longer, it could be shorter. Like I said, Linda likes to generally uh, lengthen it two inches. That's kind of standard for her. But tunic length is perfect for me. I think otherwise, if I had it reg the regular length, it would be a crop top, uh, which I'm not opposed to, but you know, not today. Um, Dev had the idea in this shirt to incorporate these amazing fish buttons that we had. So, um, and then this, which, which I'll show you here in a bit. Um, but the fabric, I believe, has four types of cats on it, which I'm sure either Betsy or Taylor Swift would know the types of cats. So they're kind of like clumped together. There's not even spacing between them. Uh, when I was cutting out the fabric, let me actually go back to me. 
um, when I was cutting out the fabric, I, the first time, I had to uh, think about, obviously, where the cats were going to go. So on my shirt I'm wearing, all my cats are going up. Obviously, they're, they're together. But I cut it out the first time, and, you know, what do you notice about these cats? They're sideways. Ugh! So, you know, I had to think in this moment, what would Linda Lee do? She would probably not let one front be different than the other front. Although I was thinking about it, it could have been a fun way to use like a pun on cats because then I could have been like, well, cats do the whole right reversal thing. They always land on their feet. So it could be a way to kind of represent cats falling and that they're going to end up right side up the right way. But I thought, no, Linda would, Linda would not approve. So I recut out my fabric and now they're all going the same way. So that's the only thing I had to think about with this tunic was just obviously having the cats going the same direction on the right front, the left front, and the back, and the collar. So I did mess up on that and had to recut. So that's okay. In the kit, your kit comes with two yards of fabric, which is enough to make the tunic length. And I would just say, think about the cat direction before you cut it out. There's I don't know if there's enough to cut a whole separate piece, but if you don't and you cut it out wrong or you want the cats to go a different direction, send a picture and tell me a cat joke. So here's the, the fabrics, here's the full look. I'm wearing the Helix pants in this. I think I said this earlier, but we don't have this fabric, but um, you know, maybe some of you have a leopard print, animal print, bottom that you could consider to wear with your new Nine Lives tunic shirt. Fish buttons. Like I said, Deb had the idea to um, to incorporate these fish buttons. So in your kit, you get one fun fish button. Um, the rest of the buttons in your kit will be kind of a neutral marbled blue button. We love a shirt that just has one fun button. <laughs> You know, it could be positioned at the top. That's actually very common in a lot of brands that we see. I'm trying to think of the brand that does that. They always have the one red button or the one kind of interesting button at the top and then the rest kind of are more neutral. So we kind of took that, took that idea and ran with it. So these are the fish buttons. The one fish button that you will get will be in your kit for this. Uh, the Nine Life shirts is... Like I've said, it's pretty short. Linda lengthens it. It has no stand. It just has a stand-up collar, but it's very easy to make. It has the four pattern pieces that create this asymmetrical vest. Um, it has differing shoulder seam lengths, which I completely forgot about until I put it on this morning and thought I was a little bit twerked, but no, it has different shoulder seam lengths. Uh, the stand-up collar, like I said, so you kind of, you get to learn the technique about, um, not slashing and spreading, but cutting to make the collar fit the neck and, um, you know, making sure that collar fits nicely and then edge stitching to secure that collar in place. Um, so just really nice techniques. I made this shirt years ago and um, I was I was happy to make it again and kind of have it in a size and in a way that I that I would actually wear because the original is just perhaps a little bit too short for me. So um, it has that diagonal hem, which is a really great detail and then a button front easy vest that you could wear with a blouse or t-shirt. So I'm wearing it just as a, a shirt for you guys today, but I could of course wear a white t-shirt under it, a long sleeve tee. I could unbutton my buttons, leave it open so that I could have it and wear with layers. So it doesn't have to just be an easy breezy summer tee, but it could be a layering piece that you consider with other options. Here's what I learned making this shirt. So in the pattern, I lengthened that pattern six whole inches I learned how to sew a stand-up collar I did have to call my mom because here's what I did I didn't stay stitch the uh, the neck seam I didn't stay stitch around the neck first so then when I was clipping it I had no place to clip to usually when you clip around the neckline when you're inserting that collar you are then clipping to the stay stitching line but of course I didn't have a stay stitching line and so I couldn't really make that collar fit on the neckline so I kind of went backwards and I had to 
take all my pins out and then stay stitch a line so that I could cut so that in order to insert that collar on the neckline, I, I was able to spread out and everything was able to fit nicely. I also learned how to press with templates for the perfect hem. I cannot hem anything without Fusy Web, and I also can't hem anything without templates. So in this pattern for the hem, I believe you need a one and a half and a one inch uh, pressing template. So you can cut those out out of a manila file, fo file folder, and it's just the perfect way to hem anything. I learned how to sew on buttons and buttonholes. It was fun to consider these fish buttons and making sure all the little fishies were going in the same direction and measuring my buttonhole so that it could fit the fish buttons in there correctly. So um, I also learned how to place additional buttons. Like I said, I had to add three more buttons to the garment because I had lengthened it. So I had to place them accordingly along evenly the front of the shirt. And another thing I learned in making the shirt, I learned how long sewing actually takes. Um, like I said, I made the shirt years ago, so I think in my head I was like, oh, it's, it's not going to take that long. So last week I had, I washed this fabric, I ironed the fabric, because although the washing didn't really change the character of the fabric, it did just make it very, very wrinkly. So I ironed it out again and kind of pressed it in place before I cut out. And I did that and then I cut out, I did my pattern work and cut out the garment. And then I just had this thought like, oh, it's not going to take very long to sew. I, I don't know why exactly I thought that, but it took me, it took me longer than I thought. But I would say it's still a garment in a day. Um, I split it up between two days, but it would be, and I'm not Linda Lee. So Linda Lee could probably make this and I would guess like three and a half, four hours. I took some breaks. I would say I made this shirt in about six hours. So, um, and that was like kind of the whole construction of the garment that was finishing the edges, doing the collar, side seams, pressing, um, with sewing on buttonholes and buttons. So the kind of the bulk of the work I did pretty quickly, but um, I learned so many things and there are just great techniques in this shirt. If you're afraid of collars and stands, if you're afraid of you know button plackets and facings and getting these corners right, your corners in the collar um, are very important. And then the corners in the, the hem, um, getting that hem pressed very nicely uh, great great techniques great not basic techniques but just good ones to review and to consider so um, these are all the things i learned making this shirt here's how to lengthen the pattern so you're going to do this for both the left front right front and the back pattern piece so for each of these three patterns i'm cutting the pattern along that lengthen and shorten here line that's in the pattern once I cut that, I'm using this removable magic tape and I attach the I, I excuse me. <laughs> I attach the top of the pattern to a piece of lightweight paper. So Linda uses this kind of medical grade paper, pat any kind of pattern paper works, um, kind of a, a pattern tissue paper would be fine. Um, but I'm cutting some of that to allow myself to add to the pattern. Then I now draw a new line six inches below and parallel to that original lengthen and shorten line that I cut. I'm now going to tape the bottom part of that pattern to the new line and then I have to redraw my grain line onto the new pa paper insert and make sure the grain line is straight and make sure the, the, um, if there's a side seam or a center front, I redraw those lines and then I have a new pattern piece. So my plan was to make um, some Picasso pants and have those made in a fun animal print. I got all the pattern work done um, and I have them almost ready, but then I realized we didn't even have the fabric anyway. So uh, we have other pants fabrics for you guys, but the Picasso pants, um, this is me lengthening them. I lengthened these pants two inches. So you're seeing that I cut um, some of this tissue paper out. I am now placing the pattern line along that lengthen and shorten line. I'm grabbing my tape to then tape this in place. So I'm, I'm, what's nice about my cutting table is I do have grids there so I can kind of make sure things are straight as I'm going. So I'm taping this into place 
And um, yeah, it's, it's a specific tape to use. So don't use regular scotch tape. It's that removable magic tape. I have my own little, um, I have my own container of it. Linda sends it to me if I need it. Um, so grab this removable tape and then I'm drawing and measuring out whatever length I want to lengthen the pattern. So for, for this, I'm using my see-through ruler. It's two inches, so I'm lengthening this two inches long. It's parallel to that lengthen and shorten line. And then I'm just placing that the next pattern piece, whichever piece above or below, doesn't really matter if you start with the lower or the upper piece. But I'm placing this piece along that line and making sure the grain line matches, making sure I'm able to then just um, redraw that grain line and place that piece two inches above that lengthen and shorten line. So even though this isn't the nine lives pattern, the principle is the same. However long, however much you want to lengthen this pattern for you, the, the nine lives pattern, this is how you would do that. Capiche? Sound good? All right, part two, fabric feature. Let's talk about these fabrics. We've not only given you our iconic sky blue cats, but we have given you multiple animal print fabrics to consider. So again, if you're not a cat fan, you just can't handle the cat situation. We have a unicorn fabric. We have an elephant fabric. We have a monkey fabric. So these are pretty small images, but these are all on today's sale. So you can see different variations of the image on the website. I'm just gonna go through them quickly and tell you a little bit about them, starting with the cotton sky blue cats. So this is 100% cotton. Like I said, I washed it before I sewed this garment and it just came out pretty crinkly. So I did iron it before I cut it out. It's very lightweight. It's very, very soft. I could totally consider making a, a set for this for pajamas or even just to go out. Um, but it would be an easy, it was very easy to work with. Um, it almost sewed like linen in the sense of it's it wrinkled easily but it also pressed very easily uh, pressed very very well so that is our cotton sky blue cats it comes in the kit but you can also buy this sky blue cats fabric as yardage and we're still waiting on the verdict on exactly what the four cat breeds are in this fabric so betsy or taylor swift i'll have to give either one of them a call <laughs> Uh, the multi-jungle cat, so that's the one on the top left. This is a viscose. It has this beautiful olive green background and pops of hot pink, bright green, and red. If you zoom in closely, you have this amazing tiger. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big fan of that. When I see this fabric, I think of pants, actually. I think of a beautiful flowy pant. You could do the Picassos, you could do the West Ends, um, you could do a, a Hudson, but I think these would be a great pant. Because like I said, could you, argue, could you argue that these are sort of neutral pants, perhaps? But I think these as pants with a, a bright green top, a pink top, um, you know, kind of pull your eye in interesting directions. So that's the multi jungle cat. The moss black and white is 100% viscose and it has kind of this pansy petal part animal spots. Like it kind of looks like flowers, but also animal prints. So I kind of like this mixture. I love the tones of this for kind of going into fall. The magical unicorn print is not just unicorns. It's 100% cotton, but it has deers, bunnies, pigs, and monkeys. There's also texture to this. So in the picture, it looks like kind of this mini print, but look on the website and you'll see kind of how, how layered this fabric really is, not only because of how many animals are in it, but just because of the texture of it. Um, again, I think it's one of those fabrics where you just have to look closely at. So far away, it can kind of just look like a, a neutral, like almost spotted effect. And because of the texture, the diamond texture to it, it pulls your eye maybe away from the animals, but it, you're looking at the fabric as a whole. So this is a great um, fabric to consider for a Nine Lives shirt or any of our other shirts. The next one, the Ink Blue and Eggshell Cats. This 
is 100% cotton and if you look closely this is like having little tumbling cats around um, it has this great ink blue background now if you don't like cats but you like other animals the one on the bottom left is our monkey melon fabric and it's made in Italy and it kind of captures the same character as the sky blue cats fabric so it's just a little bit brighter it has monkeys it has palm trees it has cacti um, but that's uh, that's a fabric to consider if you wanted to maybe go a different direction um, outside of the cat world and go into the monkey world for your nine lives tunic project <laughs> Uh, next one is the bright orange pheasant. This is 100% cotton. This is made in Italy and this also has a really interesting texture. It has an, a herringbone background and the, the pheasants are kind of big. They're about three and a half inches. So again, all these images you can see on the website and kind of get the scale for these. The next one is a silk, silk charmeuse animal scene. Again, we've got a lot of animals here. So giraffes, flamingos, madrills, cheetahs, and herons. This is 100% polyester, but I like this one a lot because it has one way, one way cross grain stretch. So again, I think a wonderful flowy pant would work. I cut this out and I have this in my stash to make actually a willow blouse. So another blouse option would be wonderful, but um, a pant option would be great too. And then the monkeys on white, our last one, you're going to see this one a little bit close up, closer up later on. Uh, this sounds like a cocktail, monkeys on white. It's 100% silk and it's Burberry. So we're going to look at this closely in a bit. But these are all of our fabrics that we're featuring for specifically um, a Nine Lives tunic shirt option. We have other fabrics on sale that I'm going to talk about that um, have that will coordinate for pants but these are all of our animal printed fabrics for you guys what i love about this multi jungle cat it really reminds me of farm rio aaron and i had a little email situation going on a couple weeks ago about how much we love farm rio um and I, when i did a facebook live a few years ago um oh no i'm sorry a few weeks ago um, i was talking about trends i was seeing and how big bold prints in anything but specifically dresses is so so popular this brand really blew up recently anthropology has collaborations with it um, and they also have just standing pop-up markets around different places i i saw it actually the first time in liberty london but this multi-jungle cat would be a great dress um, and i know samantha featured it in her recent live stream where she talked about um, using her mixtures of, of garments and her fun pattern play ideas. So Samantha and I both have this fabric and we're going to come up with something fun to do it with. And you can too. So um, if, you, if you aren't familiar with Farm Rio, check it out. All right, next up is other alternatives for a Nine Live shirt. So I kind of went through them, but Consider these four for options to have for a Nine Life shirt. If you don't want to grab the kit, grab this animal scene, grab the bright orange pheasant, grab the monkey melon, or grab the magical unicorn print that also has five other animals in it. <laughs> the best pants for this. So we're not only giving you ideas for a shirt, but we got to give you ideas for the whole ensemble. Um, the cheetah pants that I'm wearing are a look. So if you want to do that, if you have some in your stash, make a pair of skinny cheetah pants. Remember the Vogue approved ways to wear animal prints? One of the, the models was wearing basically exactly these pants with a leather jacket. So, um, but other options, if you don't want to head that direction, this linen railroad stripe, uh, Linda made these and it's now become her favorite pants ever uh it's a linen stripe that has it's cotton no i'm sorry it's totally linen and it's has it's like a 5 8 inch stripe there it's pretty small but this is a, actually a great neutral pant that would go with a lot of things the cotton shades of blue that is a cotton print that has a really wonderful faded look to it and it looks it almost looks like it has this abstract design using shades of blue. It is made in Italy. The cotton poplin, I'm 
I'm kind of partial to this one because it's just so interesting. This cotton poplin washed jungle. This is also another one that kind of has this vintage aspect to it. If you pull in really closely and you look at this on the website, this has elephants and a very fierce tiger surrounded by rich vegetation. So again, if you look at this, even on the screen right now, it's not screaming animal print at you, but it's a great one to consider for maybe a more neutral, not as loud animal pant option. The linen gray and white dot, um, it has tiny black and gray polka, dot, polka dots on a bright white background. Then we've given you some neutral options, the tumbled linen, ivory. We love a white or ivory pant, very neutral, very classy. And then this linen clay is another great one. It's a medium weight linen, but it would be a great pant color um, that would go with a lot of things. I would, I would argue that it probably goes with most all of our animal print Nine Lives shirt options today. So if you don't want to go a striped or pattern direction, you can go with a neutral pant for a kind of more classy look. All right, so let me tell you about this kit. Uh, the Perfect, Live, Perfect Nine Lives Tunic Kit, it's live on the website. Get it today, it is on sale. And the pattern is not included. The Nine Lives is a digital PDF pattern. We can print it for you in our office or you can print it at home, or you can send it off. But it's pretty nice now that we're able to print our digital patterns for you guys. So if you want to um, have us print it out, we're more than happy to do that. You just click that option on our website. You get two yards of this cat fabric, and that's enough to make the six inch added length for any size for this Nine Lives tunic. You also get one fish button and seven other buttons. So I've used all fish buttons because I'm Alex, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> I had access to the fish buttons, but you guys are gonna actually, it's gonna be a cool shirt because it's just one fish button. It's the fun button with the other buttons. So your buttons are included, and then you're also gonna get one spool of cotton thread. I'm sorry, the cat is not included, but you get four cats in your print. Breeds TBD. What are other things you're going to need to make this shirt? These are things I'm so glad I had on hand, so so glad I was able to access. So if you don't have these, these are things that are just going to up your um, capacity for, for nailing these techniques. Of course, you need the Nine Lives shirt PDF pattern. And then um, what I would suggest is getting the Nine Lives Sewing with Linen tutorial. Yes, this is a linen tutorial, but it's a 52 page tutorial, guys. Buy it just because of that. It is chock full of everything you need to know regarding notions to purchase, regarding how to lengthen a pattern, regarding how to space out your buttons. It's really walking you through how to make the nine lives in a very, very detailed way. And the linen part of it is just an added bonus. So I would grab that. That is on sale today. The Sewing with Linen tutorial, 52 pages of lots of good stuff when it comes to how to sew and using these techniques to really master it. You're gonna need a buttonhole cutting set. Um, I unfortunately couldn't find my block, so I was I had to kind of uh, I had to figure out another way to cut my buttonhole, uh, cut my buttonholes. So I couldn't find my block. But get yourself a good quality buttonhole cutting set. We have those on our website. Get a good set of hand sewing needles to sew on your buttons. You have to have. Fusy web can't live without it. This is Linda's tried and true method for really a, a great assist, a great assistant in lots of things, not just hems or collars, but it's a go-to for really any sewing project we are doing. Get yourself a great pair of trimming scissors. I'm sure Betsy and Linda might be able to comment just on their favorite trimming scissors. Um, I'm holding in the bottom corner the ones that I love and I know Linda really loves right now. These are the purple ones. Um, I think they're actually called the Perfect Scissor. Is that the brand? But get a really, really good pair of trimming scissors. I have a few downstairs in my sewing room, but these are the best. And then what you're gonna need is interfacing. I interfaced on both the collar and the left and right front uh, in order to 
you know, kind of help with the buttons. I, we have a wonderful Japanese interfacing source that we, that's our go-to. We have it in a few different colors. So grab, um, grab, grab some extra interfacing because again, interfacing like FusiWeb is something you'll just want to have on hand, but the, it really helped with the collar. I'm a little conflicted about, um, how I used it on the front pieces. Um, but I'm glad I had it. I think that interfacing obviously really helps stabilize and kind of secure um, different parts of your sewing within the projects you're using. So these are kind of my go-to tools that you will need. If you don't have them, consider getting really high quality and getting these specific products to master your Nine Live shirt. Let's take a closer look at this Burberry Monkeys on white fabric, the one that sounds like a cocktail. This is 100% silk, it's made in Italy, medium drape, no stretch, Alex approved. <laughs> I um, haven't made anything yet with this, but um, post in the comments as you look at it some of your ideas for what you would do with this fabric. This is so fun, it's Burberry, so it's a British brand, and um, we are having a lot of fun thinking about what to do with this. And it's just such a striking, fun fabric. Obviously, it would make a great Nine Lives tunic. It would make a great Nine Lives dress if you fully lengthen the Nine Lives and have an entire monkey dress. But um, consider getting this today because this is on sale and you don't want to miss this one. All right, let's review. It's really all about animal prints right now, guys. <laughs> it's really both fashion and fabric features had everything to do with finding the right animal print. We've got some great ones for you on sale today. We have the Nine Lives pattern. That's a PDF pattern. This is the perfect animal print shirt. We also showed you some pant options, not so much printed in the same way as an animal print, but we, we showed some neutral pant options. We also showed some um, more, oh, what's the word? Regular printed pant options with the denims, with the railroad stripes. Um, with fabric features, don't forget to buy our perfect Nine Lives tunic kit so you can make this shirt that I'm wearing. You can consider getting an animal print pant, get a whole matching set, get your Nine Lives tunic kit, and then also get the same in a pant, or go neutral with the ivory or camel linen. Again, to review what you get with the perfect Nine Lives tunic kit on sale today. Grab it while it's hot. And then to close, my mom sent me an article of how, where the origin of Nine Lives came from. I'm actually gonna go to my notes here about it. Um, yeah, so she sent me this article. It's just kind of one-off funny. The history of the Nine Lives is nine is considered to be a magical number in many cultures. Some cultures say cats only have six lives. Some cultures say cats only have nine. We know that it's a myth, we know that it's not true, but it's referenced in random parts of, of culture. It's referenced in Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. And we also know about cats that cats can escape death and accidents easily due to that air riding reflex. They can always land on their feet. If I scrolled down to the bottom of the article, what was funny is <laughs> it actually had this whole thing about how to make your cat live your, its best life. So let's take a note from this article because all of these six points are also things we can consider <laughs> as humans. One, get your regular vet checkups for your cat. Also, just regularly see your doctor. Number two, don't overfeed your cat. We could also take some notes. Number three, provide clean water. We, we, love, we love clean water, it's always a good idea. Number four, groom daily. I put on my deodorant today, I washed my face. Your cat will want to do that too. Number five, clean the litter box. I actually don't mind cleaning bathrooms, so remember to clean your bathroom from time to time. To time. And then number six, my favorite, playtime. Your cat loves playtime, and don't hesitate to have fun and play. And maybe making this animal print shirt, the Nine Lives tunic, will be a way for you guys to have some fun and play, because I know sewing, is a wonderful hobby because it allows just uh, it allows you to have a, a new space, a new mental outlook, you know, time
time away from the demands of life. So remember to have fun. Because did you know that, that cats can get something called boring life syndrome? So we don't want boring life syndrome. We want, <laughs> we want to make the best of our lives. So from cats to us, we can learn some things. So that's all today. Live with Alex fashion feature. Thank you guys for joining. Gosh, that was so fun. I'm just, like I said, I'm so happy I made prime time. So um, I'm going to go through the comments. And I know Linda and Betsy were also going through comments. So I'm just going to read some questions that I see. But um, because it's just me, then if you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to email me. My email is alex at sewingworkshop.com. So if I don't answer all the questions here right now, or if they weren't answered in the chat, feel free to email me. Oh, lots of great comments about all of your cats. It's so good to hear. I'm, I'm fascinated by the amount of cats, truly. I mean, all these breeds. Oh. Why am, why am I conflicted about the front interfacing? Um, this also could be like a Linda question because I remember her saying at times she doesn't do interfacing on the front facings. So because this is a very lightweight fabric, um, I think that the interfacing helped, but I think I'm wondering what it would have looked like if I didn't use the interfacing on the front facings. I'm, I'm very happy I used it on the collar, but um, w with the actual thing that I wish I would have done in this garment is I wish I would have used um, pattern paper underneath my buttonhole while I was stitching the buttonhole on. That's one of Linda's and one of the sewing workshops techniques is in order to stabilize and get that satin stitching to look really nice and secure, sorry, I'm backwards here, on the buttonhole is to put um, pattern paper, tissue paper underneath the presser foot where you're gonna place your pattern so that it just helps navigate that stitch. The stitch looks really, really clean. I was about halfway through my buttonholes until I realized oh, I didn't put pattern paper underneath my buttonholes. So you pull that away once the buttonhole is completed and you get rid of all the paper, but it really, really helps. And I kind of just wondered if I would have preferred to do that rather than the interfacing. I would, I the pattern does call for the interfacing. So depending on what fabric you get, I would just, I would consider the fabric and consider the interfacing. The interfacing is very, very lightweight. It's wonderful interfacing. So I would get that interfacing and still consider it. But I just wondered because of the nature of this fabric, it's so lightweight, um, what it would look like without it. So. I like all the comments of people saying they might get the animal print fabric. That's what I want to hear. Uh, the size of my nine lives is a size two. I made a size two. So the nine lives is sized a little differently. It's size one, two, or three. Ooh, fun. Charlotte, you made the nine lives into a tunic length pullover, no buttons. A great summer top thinking of using a wool knit vest for winter. That's a great idea. Some people agree with me on the fact that pants are neutral. So yes. Oh, you're right. Is it Paige Brenton? I should have said down a cat hole instead of a rabbit hole. You're right. Those are kind of the main questions that I've seen. Again, if you have anything else, email me, Instagram me, DM me, message me, alex at sewingworkshop.com. And um, be, I'd be happy to hear your comments. But thank you guys. I hope you had fun on YouTube and Facebook. Don't forget to subscribe to both and specifically subscribe to YouTube. And don't forget to sign up for our Knit Ensemble Workshop in Cleveland, where you get to see me and Linda in Cleveland. You get to come to my house. We get to sew two knit pieces together, the ET 
and the helix pants. And what's great about those pants is we have all the sizes for those garments. So at the workshop, you will actually get to try on all the sizes to make sure that it is the right size for you. So thanks for letting me take over prime time. We'll probably see Linda next week, but it's been really fun. I'm sure I will do more of these and um, I appreciate you all and we'll see you on swingworkshop.com and we'll see you next Tuesday for our live stream.